how do you view the idea of aligning with nature? What is, what is your perspective on that? So, yes. So finally, the time has come to say something controversial because I don't <laughs> really believe in aligning ourselves uh, with nature. And let me explain that. Uh, obviously, as you know, as, uh, as, as, as and the audience probably knows already, uh, this is one of the key stoic I know, dogmas or even, even something more than, than dogma that we need to live consistently with nature, conform, conformably to nature. We, we need to follow nature and so on and so on and so on. Uh, the problem with that, and this is kind of a banner thing for stoicism, one defining characteristic uh, as it is you know, usually conveying. The problem here, and this is the, probably one of the biggest differences uh, between uh, my own approach, between Reformed Stoicism and Ancient Stoicism, is that um, I don't really believe in following nature. Uh, in the sense, I, I, I'm not saying that, uh, just to, to, to be precise, I'm not saying that the Ancient Stoics were wrong, just to use your phrase, in their, you know, in their idea of following nature. It made sense, that would be a good line, it, following nature might have made sense in antiquity. But today it's kind of very confusing because we don't really, if you want to, if you want to write a book exposing, uh, exposing, kind of elaborating on, uh, on stoicism, what it is, uh, and explaining that to laymen, to people who haven't been exposed so far, uh, if you start with, you know, you have to follow nature, you immediately run into problems because you, it doesn't, I mean, it, you don't really know what you're talking about. Following, if you read Marcus Aurelius, uh, the idea of nature and following nature was kind of obvious, self-evident to him. He didn't. He never actually, in, in a way, uh, he never explains what it means to follow nature, at least not in the sense I have in mind. Uh, today, we have so many possible understandings of what nature means. We have science, yeah. which completely changes the outlook on the natural world. And then the, you know, purpose of the natural world that is kind of you know j just to say what to follow nature means in a way everything and nothing and that's the problem you are already you are already you know you have the the beautiful leaves and the beautiful i know what that is the flower australian flowers <laughs> you know perpetual summer down there uh you have so and you were you you were saying about the beauty of the natural world using the adjective natural of you know flowers trees nature when you you know go out and appreciate the uh all that it is all, all what is out there in the in the biological environment uh here on earth uh, and that's one way to go but you know there is nothing in the marcus aurelius that uh in, and, and in other stoics that kind of proves that this was their line of thinking we just as well may think the other way that uh, nature was i don't know being being in agreement with facts or uh, being in agreement with uh, God's will, and so on, and so on, and so on. So that's the that's the that's the basic problem. Today, the uh, kind of conceptual landscape uh, is much more is much more complicated and much more kind of fine grained than it used to be in antiquity. And we need to be much more specific. And if we want to be much more specific, uh, we need to really not use the the word. The, the phrase follow nature and we need to kind of focus on what it means so in a way officially what i'm saying is that uh we need to you know kind of abandon the idea of following nature but on the other hand my entire book is kind of you know 400 pages and it just and the only thing it does it explains in modern language what it means to follow nature today right so this is the entire thing that we we don't have if you say follow nature, follow nature, you kind of get stuck right in the beginning. The whole thing is about to explain what it means without really doing the recurse to the term nature. And this is a bit of a controversial thing because most, I mean, yeah, vast majority of Stoics basically still repeats this, this, this phrase, follow nature, follow nature. The problem is that it is a very complex thing to understand what we are talking about. Yeah, I, I actually completely agree with you. Like when when you started saying, um, you know, uh, that that you don't necessarily think that it has a place anymore, uh, I was slightly confused. But I think I think what you're saying is that it really it's it's a problem of definitions, right? Like like mm -hmm. I know for myself, uh, for the first two years of doing this podcast, um, mm -hmm. I didn't really touch on the idea of aligning with nature much at all, simply because I didn't understand it. 
and I didn't yeah. know where to go that's, to understand it, right? So, so basically, that's my point. Yeah, yeah. Th- there's there's so many different interpretations. You could say, yes. Well, you appreciate the beauty of nature, but but I, I really think that it, it comes down to aligning with things that cannot be otherwise. These just natural laws of the universe that we now know are just factual, right? And you have to deal with it. For example, if you wake up in the morning and it's raining outside don't get angry at the fact that it's raining outside because yeah, but it cannot be otherwise, is, right? Yeah, but I, I prefer, the thing here is that um, it's, it's better to explain that through the things that are not, with your, not within your power, right? Yeah. Uh, because then you're you, you are providing a specific principle, specific kind of code for thinking that way. Uh, when you say that uh, things cannot be otherwise, it's kind of, again, this is to, to, to the rain example, it's an it's a umbrella idea which saves us from the rain down there, but uh, it doesn't really explain anything. I mean, if I, and if I feel, um, if I get the coronavirus then, then what, what does it mean that I need to follow, follow nature? It doesn't mean that I, uh, that I can't go to the hospital and seek treatment because it is natural that I have to be sick. Uh, that's the problem here, that uh, the concept of nature not only has many meanings today, but it also evolves. It used to mean, I mean, in the 19th century, uh, it used to, it would mean something completely different uh, than it means today, right? Uh, both kind of, you know, politically and from the, you know, technological point of view. We are talking from Europe to Australia right now, and the, the connection is perfect, and it's kind of, you know, the sharpness of the, uh, of the video and everything is, is completely completely great and for a for a guy like back in you know the first half of 20th century that would be a miracle that would that would be against nature that would be completely completely impossible so is it you know is it is it uh, is it consistent with nature that we even speak or is it not that's the problem it changes and it evolves i mean back in in the ancient times the idea of having uh, this of having glasses would be you know against nature just nature says that you need to get blind and you, your vision needs to be out of focus and you shouldn't do anything about that this is very in the modern world this approach is very problematic yeah i can i can definitely see how it can be like that and i've i've experienced that in my own thoughts you know about things you know recently thinking about the idea of aligning with nature it's like well does it mean that you just accept things for for what they are because that's what nature has done uh you know or you know, do you say, well, you know, part of our nature as human beings is that we have rationality that allows us to think and create new inventions yeah. that can help us. So, for mm-hmm. example, uh, you know, getting glasses isn't going against nature because in our nature it's, as human beings, some people are really good at coming up with solutions for our biggest yes. problems, right? Reason. Yes. And yes. so there's so many interpretations for it and it can yeah, become so very if, confusing. If I, if, I were to say, if I were to pick, I would probably say that, you know, nature, that in a way, science, I mean, modern science is a kind of an equivalent to, uh, equivalent, is, a, is a, one of the possible expressions of what nature meant in antiquity. And also that following reason, right? Because you cannot really follow science, right? I mean, if the doctor says you do, you need to do this or that in order to avoid a coronavirus, then okay, I can follow follow that advice and follow science. Uh, but in in our practical daily life, following science is kind of you know doesn't make sense. I mean, if I uh, following science means what exactly that I shouldn't I don't know I, that I shouldn't uh, you know uh, fly or that I shouldn't what I shouldn't. Uh, um, that they shouldn't uh, run at like 100 miles per hour or something like that. Following nature is, I mean, uh, following nature translated into embracing science, that would be a good phrase, uh, gives a proper framework. I do believe strongly that uh, science, that stoicism today, reform stoicism, is very much built upon science. That is, that science provides, uh, provides us the framework for the work we live in. Uh, if you believe that uh, the moon landing was faked, or if you don't believe in a vaccine, or some, or if you believe in connecting with Australia, if you believe with flat, in flat Earth or something like that, then it makes you not a stoic. Basically, this is something I can uh, I can agree with. 
because as a stoic you need to embrace science but it's not enough in the way that uh just you know embracing science doesn't really teach us much about how to live our daily life right because it, mm. science is not about you know practical ethical decisions it, it builds the landscape which i need to live with and that's very fine uh but i need something more for instance reason and the, the other way to translate following nature is following reason using mm. the, uh, the capability of rational reasonable thinking and this is exactly what i elaborate on uh, in my book on um, this you know 400 pages are basically um developing the idea that we need to how we are supposed to use our reason but the the short you know umbrella phrase follow nature follow reason or follow facts doesn't really explain much mm. yeah I, I think i think that there's there's a lot of value in what you're saying there and and, and you know I, I i know a lot of people tend to really lean it like obviously everybody would agree that following science, like we should all, we should all lean onto the scientific understanding of the world, right? Yes. We, we need to yes. trust yes. that there are people mm -hmm. out there who know far mm -hmm. more than we do that might actually teach us something about how the world works. Uh, but then what's so confusing to me is, you know, you look at uh, something that actually has kind of helped me to learn a few things about stoicism is, is looking at ancient philosophies like Taoism and uh, you know, these Eastern philosophies, which, mm -hmm. um, had very like if you look at the ideas they're so similar to the idea of aligning yeah. with nature and i think aligning is maybe more of the correct term than, than maybe follow because not necessarily aligning, follow yeah. it's like aligning mm -hmm. and in taoism they you know one of the central tenets is for example not to force anything and to and to maybe see that that your own rationality could at times be your worst enemy because it's the very thing that moves you towards desiring so much. Right. And that maybe, uh, you know, the, the only way that I can really conceptualize it is that maybe if we are a part of the whole uh, and maybe if okay. every other and other creature on earth simply just knows what to do biologically, maybe by quieting the mind and stepping outside of our own overthinking mind from time to time, we can, uh, align with a certain biological uh, compass that that you know could even explain things for example like intuition or you know things that we just don't understand but sometimes they just work and th this has been what's really interesting to me just not necessarily claiming that these are facts but looking at different philosophies and ancient truths that can teach us about even the natural world right and what it means to be a human do you think there's, do you think that at times overthinking over rationality can, can be our biggest enemy as much as our biggest over, friend? Not over rational, not over, over rationality, but overthinking. overthinking. Yeah. And yes, yeah. this is, I, be, I believe this is basic. This is one way. This is, yeah, this is the stoic message that, uh, the, and that's why getting back to the word narratives, that's why, uh, those narratives and this mm. voice in our head can be so problematic because Mostly when our narratives, when the story in our head uh, leads us astray, it's when we, over, when we kind of overthink or overconfuse. When we put through our thoughts, we put, put more in the facts and events than then actually is there, right? For, and these are you know, all the obvious examples. I, I go catch the bus and I miss the bus and then I say, oh, Jesus, it's always me. I can never, I, I can never get the bus. Uh, I, I'm a failure, and my life is uh, is one big failure, and that kind of stuff. And this happens, right? And and this is basically this. Is what I believe we, we we agree here that this is overthinking, over hmm. over rational, rationalizing. Not a good word, but over um, creating too much interpretation, too much interpretation, and wrong interpretation to boot. In, in this sense, I agree one hundred percent. And uh, from my uh, from my personal experience with, uh, with you know trying to you know calibrate my my mind stoically, this is basically eighty percent of uh, of the effort you put in that you need to stop your mind off you know let it, leading you astray. So you need to kind of cut down these narratives because you mostly uh, you know over over create problems. You you, mm. you see problems when they aren't there and so on and so on. So here I would. Uh, perfectly agree, uh, and uh, and it's a story that uh, that is there. I mean, many people I, I think will will feel the same way. That is, uh, 
most of the problem, and this is again something I believe that you know psychotherapy teaches us that um, we put too much thought in this negative over over problematic way uh, in things. So so yeah, I agree with that. Mm. Now on uh, embracing science and embracing the atti- the scientific sci- attitude of you know sticking to what we know. I won't talk much about Eastern philosophy because I'm not really an expert there. Uh, yeah. What I can Me tell either. you yeah. is that, yeah, exactly. And, and, and so, uh, and the problem there is that uh, obviously speaking about the very broad subject with many confu- with many difficult, you know, uh, ideas uh, and concepts and terms may be kind of confusing. But what I can tell you is that absolutely there are similarities uh, between uh, Stoicism, between Zen Buddhism, and to, on the other hand, mindfulness, for example, to use the Western counterpart, there are certain deep similarities, for example, in the approach to the, to the narratives, the idea that uh, I am something else than the stream of my thoughts and so on and so on and so on. So there is some, I do believe, or at least I, I do observe, I, I see that there is this kind of a similarity in the message between various uh, various approaches, be it Stoic, be it Buddhist, be it being mindfulness, or and so on and so on and so on. Uh, but I, to answer a question with specificity, I see that similar similarity mostly in you know the things we do control, things we do not control, in the idea that we are that the life is about narratives, not about the facts. Here, not about the the relationship in, between me myself and the whole. 